Comrades, I am Admiral Andre, and welcome back to the next installment of the builds that we're doing in the new Making History Expansion for Kerbal Space Program. Today I'm not going to be looking at the Mercury craft and the Atlas rocket yet. I was thinking, you know, there's still so many options and things that we can explore on the Soviet or Russian side. And the next thing would be after the uh, Soyuz that we built in the last episode, we want something for the Soyuz to do. So I was thinking, what about building the very first Salyut 1 station? And of course the associated proton rocket, which is the next step up from the Soyuz rocket anyway. So comrades, if you're interested in building a basic space station that we can launch in one piece and deploy in low carbon orbit, then this is the place for you. So let's uh, have a look again at the Google images and just get our bearings straight, because now we're dealing with something a bit different than before. Okay, comrades, so here we are looking at the Salute 1 station. Now, I am busy uploading a video to YouTube, so things are going to be really slow right now, but I think it should still be manageable, hopefully. That's now my lot in life, I'm afraid. The, when the uploads are happening, we can barely do anything in terms of using the internet, but that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So anyway, let's have a look here. It's still busy loading, but we can already see here. This is, of course, the Soyuz uh, craft that goes up to the station. So that's going to be a very good thing because we can then actually use the craft that we made already. So in terms of the Salute itself, it has a definitely a wider diameter than the Soyuz. So I was thinking about using the two meter, I'm not sure it's a two and a half meter, but uh, the, the diameter that we already had before, the two-ish meter, that's going to be the main section here. So I'm probably going to use those hitchhiker cans for that. And then it goes a bit narrower and then a bit narrower still, where we have, of course, the docking port. So the docking port gives us already the diameter there. So that's going to be the smallest diameter. Then... If I look at the length here, this is a bit shorter than the main bulk of the craft. And then, of course, the front here is, I would say, roughly the same as the middle section. But uh, the angle of this sort of adapter is a bit, a bit longer here than this one. This is a very shallow adapter. Then, of course, we also have this part at the back where more solar panels are attached. And this is also the case here on the front section. Let me just see if we can get a picture of the back now. This one should load a bit quicker. It's a, quite a small one. So we can see with the Salute here, there is an engine attached to the back. And uh, it basically has no adapter there. It's just a flat section. So maybe we can use one of the engine plates for that. But this actually makes this design a very good one, especially for a beginner again. Because we have the ability to play around with the orbit of the station a little bit because of this engine. We could also deorbit the station at the end of its lifetime, so we don't need to worry about space debris and all of that. So this is actually a very handy thing here. Now again, there's my golden rule. You can call this the Admiral Rule. In any space-related thing, there is a Kerbal equivalent somewhere. Now, this is, of course, with the mods, so uh, we're using the stock. But, uh, yes, I'm going to have to think about the solar panels because I might have to use two of the 1x6s. That might be the only option. Oh, well, so there's no real windows here. I'm sure they had a few very small ones, but for us, using the hitch hitchhiker uh containers will actually make the station usable. Otherwise, where are you going to put the kerbals? You might also use a, a lab section, but I think for a very first space station, that's not really the way to go. Perhaps. It depends entirely on you, of course. Then at the back here, we can also see there are some thrusters there pointing out towards the sides, and then, of course, up and down as well. And then on this main section, that's where we have the uh, thrusters to go side to side with a yaw. 
So I guess that's it. Then, of course, we have to look at the proton. Now, comrades, this will be a very useful thing because the proton was used so much. This is now specifically the proton K. Just look at this. 311 launches with an 88% success rate. That is just amazing. So this makes this one of the most recognizable rockets in history, I would say. Now, if we have a look here... Uh, at the overall design, of course, we have these uh, truss decouplers in the middle again. It almost looks like there's two of them on top of each other. That's very interesting. But now we can't really recreate that because at the, the next level up diameter, we don't have these decouplers anymore. So I'm going to have to make that with struts again. But the bottom here, of course, we have these... Uh, tanks here or we can use the one meter tanks on the outside and then of course six engines on the bottom that are sort of moved in a little bit if we see this image here now again it's going to take a while to load but the engines are moved inwards a little bit and the actual tank things on the outside i'm not sure what this is actually i assume it is a tank of some kind uh, I doubt they would have it there if it didn't serve a very important purpose. Uh, they have these sort of uh, struts again, holding them in place, which I think is another nice touch we can we can use there. Then in the... let me just have a look again. So that's pretty much near the top and about in the middle. So I can just remember that. For the next stage, I think they used four engines for that. And if I'm just looking at the length here, I'm just judging quickly. It's a bit less than the first stage. But of course, then there's the interstage fairing again and the upper stage even smaller there. I'm just wondering, there should be something indicating the upper stage here. Some diagram or something. No, that's not quite what I'm looking for. This one, this one could work. That looks like just one engine. Again, I just have to wait a little bit here. Now, I also read somewhere uh, with the stations that the, the protons, of course, you get the four-stage variants and the three-stage variants. Now, the four-stage ones are very useful for sending things on orbits to the moon or uh, trajectories to other planets and all sorts of things like that. But the stations were put, placed in orbit with a three-stage proton, so it didn't have this BRIS-M stage 4, so it's only stage 3. So that's one RD0212 engine. I'm not going to worry too much about the technical aspects there. Three RD and then one... Uh, hmm actually different engines six of course on the bottom I just want to see a bit more about that middle one now why would you have three of one type and then one of another I need to see an example of that are the three then arranged around the one in the middle or what exactly is going on there let's have a look at this one Second stage, that is 4RD0210, so it's all the same. That's strange, maybe that other one is a different variant, because again, there's been several models of the protons. The third stage is just the one. Okay, well, comrades, we'll have a look at this. The station itself is about... 18 tons. Now, again, we can't exactly match that. I mean, that's not going to be a very practical thing to try and match the weight because we have to also go on functionality. And for me, always I say the golden rule is aesthetics above the sort of recreation of the exact historical components and all of that. If it's going to look nicer to just take a shortcut, then I'm taking a shortcut. So... My, uh, you, you can't go too perfectionist with this sort of thing, otherwise you are going to go crazy. Now, in the front here, we can also see there are these small tanks, again, very much reminiscent of the Vostok capsule. So we can place monopropellant in there, but it doesn't go all the way around. So I would say about one quarter the way around. And uh, one of these antennas on the top that's for docking, so the same that we used with the Soyuz, and then... One antenna on the back there, slightly offset. Of course, there's others as well, but we can decide how many we want. So let's get back into the game and see what we can do, comrades.
All right, so I should just add I have uh, installed a few mods again, but this time, unlike with the sandbox series that I had before, and which I will be continuing, I think I'll probably just finish a few of these tutorial videos first. Uh, I have added uh, some of these, again, the nav cams, and there was another one, scan set, I think. I was toying around with the life support attack one again, but I thought for the tutorial ones I don't want to do that. I just want to keep to the stock parts. But unlike before, I'm not going to have any more parts. I don't want parts mods, because now we have so many more options with the stock game. So anyway, the first thing to do, comrades, the station must have some kind of control. So let's put one of these remote guidance units on. We could, of course, go smaller as well, but I think this is going to be very good for us. Uh, this is a station after all. Let's just turn the wheel authority off. Don't want that. Now, let's see. We have to put the front end on here. Hmm. Now, the good thing, of course, is we now have a new diameter. So I think this is... Uh, I wish again they would say this, but this is, I think, the 185 meter diameter. So we can use this tank. We'll keep it white. Just have a look at the other option. Mm. I just have to have a look again at the image of the station. So that was white and then sort of gray in the middle. So we'll keep this. Then we just have to go a bit narrower from this. So this is actually a great option. I like this one. So of course we take all the fuel out. These are now station components, not fuel tanks anymore. And then I will just move this one up until it fits very snugly there. Like that. Good. Now, we need a smaller part again. I'm just referring back to the image here. So this is where the uh, airlock is going to be attached. Now, what could we use for this? I think we can make use of one of those new structural pieces, the uh, tubes here. We could even do that for this middle part, but I like this tank because of these exterior pipes. That adds a nice little texture there. So this, how about that? Hmm, maybe a bit longer than that. Yes, because we still have to add the solar panels to the sides of that thing. Now it has to go a bit narrower again. I think for this we're going to use one of the normal adapters that we already had. Yes, and then the docking port right on the end. Here we go, comrades. Let's just move this down a little bit. No, I don't want that clipping happening there, that effect. So it's going to have to sit like that. But anyway, there's no gaps there. So that's the front of the station. Now we have to go wider again. And if I just refer back to the picture, actually that adapter that we now have to add has to have a bit of an angle to it. Even more than that one. Just explore this a bit. Uh, what about this one? Now, the problem here, comrades, is we don't have a very nice adapter or a, a shorter adapter for the new diameter. We could use this one, but you see this is a very long sloped one. I don't want that. We could also use... No, this goes the other way again. No, that's not what I want. So really, this is our only option. But of course, we will never let that limit us. So we're going to use this one. And then, of course, we'll just move it up into the, the craft itself. There we go. Now that sits very nicely there. And again, these gray panels on the outside give a little bit of a texture to it. In terms of the... Oh, good grief, things are falling down here. In terms of the angles, I'm not going to be too worried about that. We could also, of course, use a slightly narrower one on the top. But what would that be? This one, perhaps. No, that's too small again. What else? What else could we use for that? That's too wide. 
I don't think we have very many options there, but I'm okay with that. That's actually quite good for me. So now we get the actual habitable section of the station. Now we could of course go for the processing lab here. So then this station could fulfill an actual purpose if you're playing a career game. But I think for our purpose it can just be the normal... Where would that now be? The hitchhiker. There we go. So now, of course, the Kerbals can look out the window as well. So at least it has some kind of function for them. And uh, we have the capacity to have eight crew members on here. Now, that would be more than the real thing. I think that was just for three at a time for Salute 1. But that's okay. We're we're, we can have a bit of license there. If we use the mobile processing lab, it only gives us space for two anyway. So now that we have that, we need to end this off somewhere, some way. So I think for that we're going to use the engine plates. We could leave it gold like that, but I think just for the sake of it, we can use this. It has a nicer finish to it. We will not make this a staging one, and then we just need probably the smaller diameter. Like that. I'm just referring back to the image again. That aft section with the engine on is definitely more in line with the diameter of the very front of the station where the panels are, not the middle. The middle here is uh, definitely wider than this section at the back, so I think this will work. Then we just need the engines. So I like that this one is also a bit indented at the back. So that again sort of matches the, the real thing there. So we'll take a spark for this. That seems to be the order of the day lately. But this is a very useful engine. Now of course you can move this in as far as you like. But it's interesting again with this little pipe on the side. It can actually look nice like that. I might leave it like this, even though the, the image shows clearly that just like the Soyuz engine, it's completely indented into the, the structure there. But for us, I think this will do. Let me just have a look. So there would definitely be monopropellant thrusters at the back as well. So we can add a few of those. It's quite difficult to judge here. I'm just opening this one. There's definitely four, but there's also two big ones like that. Uh, now for us again, practicality is always the overriding concern, so I don't think I'm going to worry about having six at the back. Let me just undo that. I wanted to have it snap actually, just like that. So yes, that's the thing comrades, there's uh, always, when it comes to this sort of thing, a balance that we have to strike. Being too realistic is never a good thing for gameplay. There we go. We'll do that. Again, the nozzles are not being clipped there. I might just move them in a bit. If I could select them now. So probably after this, we could look at one of the later stations as well. We could even look at Mir. That would be very interesting. Of course, that's going to be a bit of a more involved build there. But it is possible. And then we can culminate with the N1. And possibly do a moon landing. And in, the, in that sense also I've made a mission, comrades. You can find it on the Kerbal Space Program forum. <coughs> and that is of course using the N1 to land on the moon. But now again it's a very simplistic mission because it is my first one. And already I've had a complaint that the thrust to weight ratio is not high enough. But I have managed each time to get it into the required orbit. But... Uh, I'm always happy if somebody tweaks it a little bit. But anyway, we can have a look at that when we get to that part of the journey. I think just for now a space station is the, the order of the day. Let me just have two of these panels. I think in terms of the width, that is more correct. Of course, when they're tracking the sun, they're not going to line up nicely the whole time, but that's okay. Just want to move them so they sit more or less in the middle here. Just a bit, and of course they must not overlap. 
there. Slight gap in between. Uh, I'm holding my breath with this sort of thing. Anyway, now we can just fold that up. I'm very happy with that. Then, of course, oh, good grief. It's not the right orientation, but there's a very easy solution to that. There, done. It doesn't matter which way the pipe is on the back there. So that's it. Now we just have to have more of these uh, place anywhere thrusters. This is, of course, for you to orientate the craft. So we'll have two like this. So this will be the pitch. I'm not sure how far to move that in, because then again we're getting slight clipping in the nozzle. Besides, on the real thing, there's a very clear structure there, so I would rather keep it like that. Then, of course, they also have additional ones. These could be the roll thrusters, I suppose. If we uh, place them like this, four times symmetry. Just see which is the exact one, this one, and then angle them slightly. No, but that's not going to work. We'll have to do this in twos. Hmm. I don't want it to go down too much here because it's going to hit the solar panel. But like that we're definitely going to be able to roll a little bit, at least, because you want to orientate the craft in different ways. So let's just see if we can make this look a bit nicer now. Oh, they're clipping on the bottom. It's so interesting to me, you know, the missions that are included with the expansion. If we have a look at how those craft were built, you can see clearly now, I guess that's just how the developers were, were doing it, but they were clearly not very interested in reproducing the historical craft. For instance, there's the one with the, uh, Gemini, and that's, uh, well, it's a very interesting design they had there. But maybe they're sort of trying to tell you again, there's no right way to do this. It's totally up to the player. But I have tweeted to uh, Kerbal Space Program and said I'd be more than happy to design vehicles for them. But uh, I doubt that will ever happen. I think this is good, comrade. So now we do have a roll control there. I could now specify the actuation toggles only to roll, but I, I don't think that's necessary, really. Then, of course, we also need two more on the side down here. So this is going to be also our yaw. I think we, we do need that, even though we could use these four for that as well. Just move that one in a little bit now. Unfortunately, I can't put put it right in the middle there because then it sticks out on the bottom. But what I could do is just roll it a little bit so the flat side is sticking out there. Come on. There we go. And then move it up. So that's going to give us a little bit more space. But still, now it sticks out on the other end there. No, that doesn't look nice. I suppose these ones could just have the nozzle sticking out, but we still see a bit of the structure there. No, I'm happier with having more of it show there. That that looks much better in my opinion. Okay, so it's going to be like this. Mm. No, we also have these railings in the way. Maybe I can move it a little bit down. Like that. I guess that will have to do, comrades. It's always a balance. So now I just also want to move this stuff. I don't want this pointing this way. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Gonna have to now move that again. That's alright. Also have to remember the batteries. Uh, see, where was that spot? Right there. Good. That's easy enough. So the station is taking shape. Uh, just now the solar panels on the front again. Now in this case, is it again in the middle? I'm just going back to the images again. Uh, 
Let me just see, where was that one detailed image? No, of course we still have those tanks at the top, so let's place them first. They are... it's very difficult to see always, you know, we only get one perspective there. Let me just get those tanks. So I will place just two times symmetry and I will move them into the craft because this is definitely too big. Just like that. So we have those uh, quarter diameters with the tanks there. Then move that down like this. Now in this case I think again if we have it stick out like this it, it's just definitely not correct in terms of scale. Even that it looks too big. So burying it sort of three quarters I guess is the best solution here. And it still looks quite good I think. Just make sure they're even. Now of course the correct placement is very important just for the... You can see there's a bigger gap than there. Good grief. Don't want that sticking through there. Okay, this will do comrades, but now see this one is lower. No, 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 no. This will not do. The Admiral Design Bureau does not do half jobs here. Now this one is sticking out the top there. No! Why? Hmm. Okay, that one is then going to be the guide for the rest. There we go. This will have to do, comrades. Now we can place the solar panels. So, let's see. Uh, it's again halfway between the tanks and the uh, adapter there. Are we happy with that? I think that's pretty decent. The gap between them might be a little bit too big though. Let's move the top one down a bit. Yes, that's it. That's it, comrades. So fold this up and then we place one of those antennas on the front here for the docking procedure. Just want to see the image again. So that would be right on the edge there. So for this, of course, I just use the high gain antenna. That's definitely the best solution. I've also been practicing a little bit with the whole Apollo build, but I have to say there's a really frustrating thing with the ladder. I don't know who designed that, but they weren't thinking about the ladder. Because the legs and, oh, good grief, all of that. I'll show you, comrades. Hopefully by that time I've come up with a solution for that. Also, of course, attaching a rover is nigh impossible. I'm going to have to send the rover on a separate rocket to the moon before we land. Because the scale of the actual lem or mem here is actually I think a bit too small but anyway not not too nitpicking here I'm just thinking ahead a little bit so now we need an antenna on the back here now where would that be up here just like that I would say and then it goes in I just move them in right to the edge there. Of course this will also make it easier when we attach the fairings and all of that. Then what's next? I think that'll do comrades. We could put another antenna on the bottom here. We'll say this could be an sort of a backup one. Again me and building a real craft. I could swear I'm building a real spacecraft. Okay, we just have to play around with it a little bit. There, that'll do comrades. Now the next step is what exactly? We have 8 tons now. 8 tons is of course less than the real thing, but this is why I said we can't really go according to weight and thrust to weight ratios and trying to match things exactly. We just have to sort of 
get the appearance more or less right and that is my guide that's why I always say aesthetics comes first let me just have a look again at the thing is there any specific thing that I'm missing no I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with this all that I really need now is of course the batteries and that sort of thing so for a space station I would say we need at least several hundred charge so let's attach it here We'll say this is again part of where the equipment module is of course this has no practical importance but uh, there we go that'll do 815 I think is fine because of the solar panels as well so now I just want to program this all on number one toggle antenna extend the panels of course these are one time only you can't retract them again there shouldn't be a need for that and the last one okay so we are going to call this one tutorial salute one uh, making history no history expansion save good so that gives us the payload now we have to look at the rockets comrades or the, the rocket so let's actually build it right off of this thing is there anything more that we need we can't change the color of the hitchhiker containers and all of that so we are good to go i think so let's attach a very small decoupler to this we could even use one of these but now of course it's a bit too big there again we'll just use that we don't need the shroud but i'll leave it on there that's also very weak so it won't kick us too far i could even turn it down to 50 percent then we have the fairing so we'll use the two and a half meter so there we actually see the proper diameter so it's 1.25 1.875 2.5 3.5 4.5 Okay, hopefully I can remember all of that so I don't care about the attachment point of the uh, plate there it's not a staged one is it no I don't want it to be staged so we'll just attach it right there and then make this go out very slightly and then all the way up just like that so there's our fairing comrades now of course this is a bit of a long fairing but uh, that is unavoidable given the payload there then we need the upper stage now for this if I just refer back to the image again how are we gonna do that let me just think for a moment would one of the tanks be enough let's have a look at the scale here given the payload so we need these that I think is going to be a bit too much now that seems a bit under undersized there it just have to be the black and white one unfortunately we don't have many other options and it's definitely not orange there so what will we have of course I'm not too sure if the Kerbal engineer is correct because it still has not been updated there but what should we use with this? A Reliant maybe? One of these old engines? What does that give us? One thrust to weight and one and a half kilometers. I think that is fine actually. So this sets up the rest of the rocket. We can move this in a little bit because it's uh, jutting out too far there. Now if I try and find another image where we could see the upper stage third stage equipped with one fixed single okay now the thing is still loading but it is uh, the, it actually does have a sort of a rounded end to the tank there maybe we could try and recreate that although this is now again a bit pedantic I suppose like that maybe I'm not sure how the fairings are going to look with this actually we could also have just an engine plate here i think that's a good idea because i like the staging of the engine plates ah. i 
then not this on top. Well, actually, that. Hmm, there's two points there. Why would that be? Oh, it's this one on the top. Just have to make that very short, otherwise, it's going to stick to that. But I'll do this and then I'll put this on top and then I'll just move this in a little bit. So it doesn't interfere with the fairing there. There we go. Now the engine. So if I look back at the picture again, how far is that engine sticking out? It's basically just the bell. Like this. It's not this whole rest of the thing. I could take it out to there. I think that's decent. Okay, we'll use it like that, comrades. And of course, this will have gimbal control. Then we need the next stage. So this will now be one of the longer ones like this. And uh, just want to make this a bit shorter again. Mm, not like that. Now they overlap. There. We'll make it a bit shorter now. Take the shroud away. That's not clipping there. Nope. Okay. I'm happy with that. Now with this length, I think just going back to one of these images now, but I need to actually see the upper stage on its own. It's very difficult to judge, but this diagram that I'm looking at, so that's one, two, so that is a bit more than two, two times the upper stage. Again, this is pure rough guesswork here, so we're going to need a bit more. Maybe one of these flat sections. That should do. Now we need four of the engines here. So we're we going to do another plate. I'm babbling comrades because I'm figuring this up as I'm going. I'm figuring it out as I'm going. I can't even speak today. What about two of the bobcats? That will give us four. Let me just turn this off again. Is that going to be too powerful? We could always turn it down. Hmm. The Bobcat is actually a very useful thing, I have to say. I've been experimenting with it a lot lately. Even on the N1. Yes, I like this. 174. That's a lot, but we get over two and a half kilometers of Delta V, if this is correct again. Let me just have a look at this diagram. Now, this doesn't even show that. Uh, I think this will work. We could turn it down a bit. Maybe the gimbal limits, only 50. If it's too much, it's going to start wobbling out of control here. Okay, that's good. Should we turn down the thrust? Mm, maybe. For a second stage, I think 1.5 should be good, again, if it is accurate there. And I would like the staging to happen at the same time as the engine ignition for that hot stage effect. Now we need a few of these tanks, I think. So if I'm judging the length again, the bottom, or oh, good grief, I keep knocking stuff over today. One of those days, comrades, one of those days. But the bottom here, I would say, is just over uh, twice as long as the upper stage. So it would be one of these and then one of these, perhaps? Was that now too long? Well, let's play around with it. So let's take this one first. Of course, this I'll have to work on. Shroud off and... No, that's clipping there. This will have to do. Just see, if I move this back up, how are we doing now? So if I take the length of that... No, wait, 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 wait. Go back to the figure. Okay, the bottom one is just longer than the middle one. So if I take that and... I'm just using my fingers here, comrade. So if I'm sounding like I'm babbling, forgive me. I say this on its own is pretty much correct for the first stage. 
So let's actually play around with this now. Let's use these exterior tanks. So that would obviously be one of these one to five diameters. Now, unfortunately here, we don't have ones that are purely white. So it's either going to be a case of using lots of, of these ones, so they'll have lots of stripes on them, or it'll be these ones with the vertical stripes, or it will be a lot of these ones that will again then have lots of the stripes. I think just for the simplicity, we might use these ones, the longer tanks. So six times symmetry, and obviously we're going to use one of these nose cones. And this goes into the rocket just beneath where it attaches. So I would say almost where it is now. Although it could actually go a little bit higher. Okay, uh, you see the stripes, they do bother me a little bit. I would have preferred to just have white exteriors here. Although we could do that, but then it's not going to carry any fuel. Maybe we should. Let's have a look at those uh, pipe structures again. Just attach that there. Not the engine plates. Structural fuselage, that could even work. Mm, it's a bit of a gap on the bottom now. Uh, that's okay, that's alright. We could just... Uh, Make sure these things are lined up properly. I'm seeing where the seams are and now it's not matching that top one. Ah, good grief. There, that's better. Then we just move this in. Now, of course, we have this in the back, this black and white stripe as well. I think that should go on the bottom, honestly. Now it's semi-impossible to attach there again. Do it like that and then go short there. And then attach this, but of course in the reverse. Maybe a bit down. Just so it lines up on the bottom here. Okay, more or less, we could put a plate down here on the bottom as well. If I just look at that one image that showed the bottom of the craft, though, it has this sort of metallic finish there. Mm, I don't think a plate there is going to be the right thing. This looks more appropriate. But now the big question is the engines, comrades. The engines, what are we going to use for that? So we now have 85 tons to lift here. Where's that decoupler? Okay, that's fine. So six engines. I'm very tempted to use the skiffs here. If we just... Obviously we need gimbling on this stage. There's no fins on the proton rocket. So if we use the swivels, that will definitely not be enough, I think. Is it actually 1.6 or 1.4? Wait, something's not right here. This is because of the plate. Uh, Kerbal Engineer, the old version, still doesn't account for that properly. It's counting them together now, even though they are on a different stage. What if I move them up? Nope, you see, still, still the same story. We'll have to do a quick test here, comrades. I just want to say that we want the top of this to have an auto strut right through to the bottom and of course the engines must also auto strut then I am not going to save I just want to launch and then I'll get back to you in just one moment uh, to report on this but I can almost guarantee you this is not enough to lift this rocket good grief comrades it seems I was wrong it just barely takes off so it actually works that means we could use this. Of course, now someone might say again, oh, the thrust to weight doesn't match the real thing. I can't, can't be bothered to be that specific, but we could also use the skiffs for this. If I just have a look at it. Because there's now one very important thing that we still have to do here. You see, now obviously the whole thing has to be moved up 
like that and then in a little bit like that but now it sticks out here a lot unfortunately there is going to be no getting away from that that is just gonna be part of our lives comrades although this does look nice I can still rotate this a little bit just to hide the tanks there okay I guess that's the best I can do uh, so this gives us definitely more thrust to wait but is it necessary with a heavier payload I'm sure it will be but for our purpose is it although I do like the look of this but this sticking through here is bothering me if I just have a look at the image again what we could do is move these structures a little bit in it's still gonna stick out there on the bottom though you see just like that but they are pretty much a rounded shape there okay I shouldn't mess with a vertical there you see we still have that luckily the dark color there in the back makes it a little bit less obvious but not really although we could argue it's part of the structure but just look at the size of the nozzles though it is a bit smaller this other one would probably be the best mm. although that would not be wrong we could use the skiff but let's use the good old swivels let's have a look at that still gonna have the problem of it sticking through there that looks horrible I don't want that okay don't look too closely at the bottom I guess no it has to be a bit further in like that so it's pretty much where the exterior uh, structure joins with the central tank that's where the engine should be so I would almost say like that well these things are gonna be part of our lives I guess there's no getting away from that what other engine could we have used even the vectors are gonna have that same problem no it'll have to be this so let's just think about these now probably best to move them in though of course the real thing doesn't have that no but like this we barely see that anyway although does that look like the right scale it's very difficult to say very difficult to say now I'm sort of liking the skiffs more now we're going with the other one I've changed my mind again okay never mind if I just have a look at these this whole thing is trial and error comrades you see it's the same story again no it's the skiffs okay let's just move it so that we don't see the tanks on the sides of this thing or not as obviously and then move it up then in now of course they must not clip there good ah, the stuff let's see if we can play around with it what if we use plates to hide that would that even be worth it let me see what I can do here comrades I'll get back to you in just one moment this is probably gonna take a few minutes and I just wanna see what it looks like hmm comrades I'm not sure it's not the most elegant solution but I kind of like it I'm just using these panels now to cover this up and I'm getting some real lag spikes since I started doing this very strange 
just to cover these sort of tanks and things, the edge of the engines up and all of that. I also don't want to move the engines up any further because you see there we're getting some clipping of the nozzles. But then again, see that's the thing I don't go for, but now we're already doing it. That would look more appropriate in terms of the scale here. I mean, this whole thing sticking out on the bottom doesn't quite look right. No, let's do it like that. Actually a bit further down. So it fits under the structure now. Now, of course, the real thing does not have this, these sort of housing things there on the bottom. But there I can say it's the Admiral Andre touch. So, hmm. Oh, well, just keep that in mind, comrades. Now I just want to add some struts to the side here. There's the legs again. I'm not quite understanding where these legs are coming from. Now which way around should it be? Probably like that. Just straight down to attach to the uh, center there. Actually, just want to have a look again. Okay, so they don't meet in the middle, so that's not quite right. Should move it in a little bit. Although it might just be unavoidable. No, that's horrible. Uh, could I just move that? Is that going to remember this? Getting this stuff right is never the easiest thing. Well, I guess they're just going to meet in the middle, comrades. Now, I'm going to have to probably exit the game. I'm getting these weird lag spikes. I never do, usually. Could be it's just not a appreciating my efforts in terms of this bottom part there. I'm not sure if I'm happy with that either. I tell you what, comrades, I'm going to play around with this for a minute. Exit the game, come back in and then continue the recording. Hopefully that will sort out this problem. Right, comrades, so we're back again, and it seems that the lag spikes are gone now. I guess after a while it just gets a bit too much, I have to restart a bit. Anyway, I like this structure on the bottom here. It's completely unconventional, but the more I see it, the more I like it. Uh, it could go a little bit more evenly, though. Oh, good grief, I shouldn't start messing with that. That was not the intention now. Uh, just a little bit, though. No, not the engine. Okay, that'll do. That'll do, comrades. But uh, in terms of these struts, they look a bit out of place here for some reason. It's because of these large attachment points that they have. And I've noticed if I move them in, uh, and I save and reload, then they just reappear like this. So I'm wondering if we should just leave them like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, that is a bit more minor. So let's continue with this whole inter stage structure here first. Then we can come back to that. So in this case, I am just going to be using a whole lot of struts. So eight times configuration. Uh, would that be good or should we go six? Let's go six. I think that makes it a bit easier with the spacing. And then just attach straight up there. And the same in the middle here. Of course, just angle it a bit. Okay, now we need some more to give that kind of cross structure. So I think let's take again six times. And go in between these two. 
and do the same on the other side. I like that. I know the gap is a bit too big here. Let's try making it a bit smaller. Let's just see what happens if I move this up. Hmm. Yes. Now, of course, we could add many more struts here, but this is all going to drop away anyway. Now, the ideal would, of course, have been another one of these, but they're too small here. Tweak scale would actually be a very handy thing now, but uh, I think for our purposes this will do, comrades. This will do. So let's just place this right down here. Make sure that the auto strut thing is still working. Auto strut heaviest part and the same with the engines. And then I guess that's about it. That's about it, comrades. Let's get the... Uh, stability enhances on the outside and just see what this thing looks like on the launch pad not too bad i have to say obviously there's limitations that we have to work with like this inter stage structure now but uh, i also think these struts here are probably okay i can just move this one out a little bit more even no, this one should be moved in a little bit. Now this stuff will drive you crazy if you let it, comrade. So you have to you have to draw the line somewhere. That'll do. Save. And we are gonna launch this from the Woomera site. I just hope we have enough fuel here. That's now one thing that uh, I have not tested yet. So let's have a look. Also, I would like this thing to detach in a clamshell fashion with two sides and probably we'll need a bit more force because of the size of the whole thing. No, this will be just white there. Okay, that'll do, comrade. Save again. Woomerang launch site and I will speed this up again and see you in orbit if we make it, comrades. If we make it, let's hope. Save again. Here we go. Oh, it's night time, so let's just fast forward a little bit. Uh, that'll just be normally. There we are. In terms of the scale of the rocket, I'm happy with it. I know the fairing here is a bit long, you know, in comparison with the rest of the thing, but that would be determined by the payload. Normally, if you send a heavy satellite or probe or something, it's not going to be this long. So I'm happy with that. Let's see how this thing performs, comrades. Comrades, we made it. Here we are, and we have fuel to spare. I'm very happy with the whole launch and the uh, actual performance of the rocket, so I'm going to keep it like it is. You know, if it works really well, then uh, that's usually a good sign. So, uh, yes, I'm happy with that. Now, the other thing that I do want to change, though, was the detaching of the fairings. It actually knocked into this fairing base here and that gave us a little bit of a spin on the way up 
So I'll just increase the force with which it detaches. I also want to add a strut or two here, just so it looks a bit more stable here. But uh, other than that, I think we're good. So let us detach the upper stage now. And that has not changed our orbit at all. So this is a roughly 150 kilometer orbit. But of course that means you can play around with it and even go a bit higher given that we still had fuel left. Of course now this station has its own engine and fuel. So you can still have a great deal of uh, leverage there. You can really maneuver it a little bit if you're not happy there. Let's just get it back onto the prograde and roll the thing. Now we'll figure out if this roll thing worked. Just turn that off now. It's very weak, but you know, for a big station like this, I think it's fine. We can roll. That's all that matters. Of course, if you want to make it easier, if you're a beginner, just put the reaction wheel back on again. That will give you all the control you want. But I like the added challenge of turning that off. Okay, good grief, I switched it off again. Uh, just roll a bit again. Go back, go back. Counter it again and just speed it up so it doesn't mess around with it any further. There we go. So now we just press number one and everything should deploy correctly. Of course, there's one that I forgot here. And we're drifting a little. Of course, the easiest thing if you want to make very fine maneuvers with your RCS. Lately, I see it, it overreacts a lot, you know. Uh, if you make a, even if you just have it perfectly stable and you come out of time warp, the RCS will mess around again. So in that sense, just turn off the SAS and uh, then make very fine maneuvers. Turn your RCS off and put the SAS back on, even though it doesn't mean anything on its own. But uh, otherwise, you'll see if we're not moving right now. I don't want us to move. We're just on stability assist. But as soon as I turn the RCS back on, you see, it does all sorts of things, even though it wasn't supposed to. It's very strange. And it will keep doing that now, even though we're not tracking prograde or anything. Oh well, just turn it back off. So there is our station, comrades, and a very fine one it is. Especially, again, you're just beginning with this game. You might want to build your first space station. I think this is a worthy one to consider. So this is the Salute one, and of course the Proton as well. We can now go the added measure of docking the uh, Soyuz to it, but I'm wondering wondering if that wouldn't make a nice tutorial on its own. Of course, by this time, there's so many tutorials about how to dock, but I'll show you how I do it. So uh, that will be a shorter video anyway. Thanks for watching, comrades. As always, you will find the Salute and the Proton rocket in the description, and I welcome any changes that you might want to make with them. Uh, you can always tell me about it in the comments. Uh, that uh, could be that you have some ideas about solving some of the problems that uh, I couldn't properly deal with, uh, like that engine housing on the bottom, but I kind of like it now. It's my personal touch on the whole thing. So I'll see you next time, comrades, and uh, as always, have a fantastic day, and, uh, well, there we go. Station in orbit. I hope it's a nice view from up here.